Hi, this is Ian Cole bringing you an IAQA tech tip on mold in walls, part three. In part one of this video series, we covered methods for finding mold in walls appropriate for a layperson. We described cutting an exploratory hole in the wall and we talked about sniffing around outlets. In part two, we covered methods requiring some tools such as boroscopes and moisture meters. Here in part three, we'll cover methods involving the use of a laboratory. Now a small disclaimer, there's a considerable amount of disagreement and controversy over the usefulness of lab-based methods. Nevertheless, let's dive in. The first laboratory-based approach to determine if there is mold inside a wall is to take samples of the air in that room. There's anecdotal evidence that air samples collected in rooms that have mold in their walls will result in elevated counts or unique types when compared to outdoors. The presumption is that spores will escape out of openings such as electrical outlets and impact the readings. One drawback of this approach is that it doesn't identify where the mold is exactly growing. If there are elevated results, was it because of this wall or that wall or the floor or the ceiling or maybe the adjacent room? You don't know. Also, I've seen several projects where the air samples have come back low even though there was verified mold growth in or on the walls. The second laboratory-based approach is to collect air samples from within the walls. By collecting air from the interstitial space between the framing and behind the drywall, one could get a sense of the probability of mold growth. Low counts, low probability, high counts, or the presence of water damage indicator molds, high probability. This approach goes right to the source of mold when compared to general air samples collected in the middle of a room. One drawback is the difficulty in interpreting the results. There's no threshold value above which mold growth is guaranteed. One respected industry publication cautions against this method's use and describes the possibility of false negatives and false positives. So there you have it. A quick overview on several different ways to evaluate if there's mold growth in walls. My experience is that it often takes several different methods to hunt it down. If you'd like to learn more about mold inspections and sampling, consider taking classes in the IAQA University. Visit the IAQA website for more information.